Amen. I feel like this is a different day. I feel like in the spirit, there's something different that is happening in the yes. atmosphere. I don't know about you, but I just... It is something. I, I, I tell you what the devil has been doing his usual tricks. But, but yes. God, I feel victory. I feel strength. I feel power. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We just want to welcome those that are here on, and joining us online. I say good morning, Sister Danita. Good morning for those that are in the, in the service on today. We praise God for each and every one of you that is joining close and near. Amen. And I, I feel like this way, it really even, uh, it doesn't even matter. Uh, uh, Sister Sierra, we want to be have a special prayer for her sister Sierra. She's in the hospital and she's dealing with a few yes. different issues. So if, just real quick, if you can stand those that are in the house and yes. you can lift those antennas up to God. And we just pour out right now and we right pray now. that she is watching or she gets a chance to look at this yes. and maybe it encourages her. Father, we pray right now, Lord, that you would touch her body. Yes. Strengthen her body right now in the name of Jesus. We pray right now for healing, for deliverance, for protection, even over yes. that unborn baby right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray right now, Lord, that you just move in her life, that you strengthen her, oh God. Bless the doctors, touch the doctors that are yes. working with her, oh God, right now in the name of the Jesus, name of we Jesus. pray. Father, strengthen, give her that healing. We speak for a speedy recovery right now in the name of Jesus, we declare it. We thank you for it in Jesus' name, amen. Come on and put your hands together. Amen, hallelujah. Amen, uh, who do we see here? I see we got uh, Sister Gloria, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Mary, good morning. Good morning. And Therese, good morning. Praise God. Yes, uh, Shantina, good morning. Sister Evelyn, good morning. Praise God. Minister uh, Mayaka, good morning. Yes, thank you, Sister Mariama. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Praise God. Sister Tammy, good morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank you. We, Sister Kiana, we, good yes. morning. Good morning. Texas. Texas, right. yes. Hello, hello. And Natasha, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to get started in a little bit. I tell you, for those that are watching online, I, I tell you, our intercessory prayer team was kicked off today, and I can yes. feel it. I can feel it in Glory. the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Amen. I can feel it in the atmosphere. Amen. Right. And, and I'm learning that God is setting things in his timing and in his speed and in his place. And it's just a blessing uh, just to have that established back in the house. We know we established prayer throughout this whole COVID-19. But it's something different when it's really, it is really intentional for our service. When it's really that foundation for us moving forward. I think everything else is easier. Amen. Praise God. Good morning, Brenda. Praise God. Good morning. Praise God. Who else do we have? I see Sister Tammy. Praise the Lord. We're going to have, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Lakia if she would come and lead us in prayer. And then after that, you would be in the hands of our praise and worship team. Amen. Praise God. Come on, y'all, just because y'all here. Put your hands together. Quiet. Let's just make. Make some noise Amen. in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just make some noise. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you, oh God. Oh God, we magnify you, oh God. We lift up your name in this place, oh God. We give you glory in this place, oh God. We worship you in this place, oh God. 
We give you glory. We give you praise. We honor you. You are king. You are Lord. You are Yahweh, oh God. You are more than enough, oh God. You are our wonderful counselor. You are our advocate, oh God. You are the lion of Judah. You are the almighty God. You are the omnipotent God. You are the God that reigns supreme, oh God. You are the everlasting God. You are the king of kings, oh God. There is none other like you, oh God. And we worship you in this place, oh God. We give you glory in this place, oh God. We magnify you in this place, oh God. We thank you for your wind in this place, God. We thank you for the rivers of your glory in this place, God. We thank you for your presence in this place, God. Lord God, we thank you for being among us, oh God. We thank you for you walking up and down the aisles, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for you being in the homes, oh God, of those that will be with us on today, God. We thank you for doing an unusual thing on today, God. We thank you for an aratakasoya. We thank you, God, for an arasataya, an unusual visitation on today, God. We thank you right now, God, for you breaking up the fallow ground in this place, God. Breaking up the fallow grounds of our hearts, oh God. We thank you, God, that you are preparing us. We thank you, oh God, that you are ready in us, God. We thank you, God, that you are making a way, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that wide, oh God, is the door for us to walk here, God. God, we thank you, God, that you have given us access, God, and we come in now in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you now, Father, that there is no resistance, God. We thank you, Lord, that there is no distractions, Father. Lord God, that you have opened the door and granted us access, Father, to come in, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, God, King of kings, come in this place, God glory of God come in this place now in the mighty name of Jesus God we thank you for your presence now that your presence is alive in this place father that you are raining down God on every heart in this place father in the name of Jesus Lord and we put our eyes on you we focus on you God we put our attention on you father in the name of Jesus we cry out unto you your name is Jesus and every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you are Lord and you are God alone in the name of Jesus Lord we bow down before you in our hearts even now in the name of Jesus we look before you father the author and the finisher of our faith God in the name of Jesus King of glory come in the Lord God Almighty the God that reigns the God that rules the supreme God in the name of Soya, healing only comes through you deliverance only comes through you Restoration only comes through you. And we thank you now, God, for you releasing the reviving in this place, God. We thank you, oh God, for reviving the hearts of your people, Father, like never before, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for you releasing the oil of gladness in this place, God. Ratakasoya, oh God, I thank you for you removing the garments of heaviness in the name of Jesus, Lord. And all those that will be watching even now that is experiencing heaviness in depression that is going through discouragement. God, we thank you now for you meeting them at their point of need, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you now for you breaking the spirit of confusion. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, oh God, for you breaking identity crisis. In the name of soul, in the name of soul, but we thank you, oh God, on today, God, that they shall meet you face to face, Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, God, that you are the God that uplift burdens, God. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, that we will position ourselves in you on this morning. And we give you the glory. We give you the glory. We give you the glory.
around us. Let all that we are praise you. Can we bless our God this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Good 
good to me. So many doors you open. So many ways you made. So many times you killed me. So many doors you open. So many ways you made.
times he's good. Who's been good? Come on, I give him the glory. Come on, everybody out there that we give him the glory. Come on, lift up your hands. Give him the praise. Hallelujah. Every time I hear that song, I can't help but cry. Come on, have you ever been in a situation and you know it was nobody but God that brought you out of it? Come on, you didn't deserve it. I don't know about you, but I'm a friend of grace. Anybody in here experienced the grace of God? Hallelujah, that's why we can see he's been good. Hallelujah, he's been good through my tears. He's been good through my pain. Woo, hallelujah, he's been good. He's been better than good. Better than I could be to myself. Come on, he's opened doors. Come on, anybody I'm talking to on today. Come on, has he opened any doors for you? Online, has he opened any doors for you? Come on, he's opened doors and, and he's made ways out of no way. Hallelujah. He's made a way. He made a way. <laughs> he made a way. Come on, he gave me joy. Mm. In the midst of my pain, I still have joy. Hallelujah. It doesn't make sense. I, I shouldn't even be here today, but by his grace. Hallelujah. He's been good. Come on, put your hands together one more time if you know that God's been good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You may have your seats in his presence. Praise, Praise God. God. Listen, I've seen Evelyn. I see you um, even in the storm. He's been good to you. Praise God. Uh, Brother Raymond, the ultimate way maker. Janet, yes, hallelujah, better than good. <laughs> Some things are just planted on the inside, and when you hear the sound, you respond to it. Your soul responds to it. He's been better than good, praise God. Listen, I just want to thank you. Uh, if you didn't, didn't get a chance to share, or if you've never done it before, please share this broadcast. Please share it. I want to get the word out on today. It's like inviting somebody to service, amen. So if you can do that, whether you're in person or whether you're uh, at home or on, at work, please just share. Praise God. Good to see you, Javon. Praise God. Minister Greer, good to see you. Before I get started, I just want to acknowledge um, that we are praying for our the family of our beloved sister, Minister Ramika Gibson. Amen. And our prayers are with that family. Amen. Pastor Tina, we, we just we just got in into the state and she was calling and we went to the hospital. We got to pray for pray with her uh, just before in her last in her last hours. And um, we just we were just so grateful just to be there and to be able to touch. But she's gone on to a better place. Amen. Amen. We don't like to talk about it, but it, it, we look forward to a time where we don't suffer. We look forward to a time where we don't have to have, be pain or deal with things. This is the believers. It's the believers choice. Amen. It's what the believers look forward to. Amen. Otherwise, what's the purpose of us lifting our hands? Amen. Amen. We look forward to seeing, seeing Jesus. Can I get a witness in this place? Amen. I believe like this. Every question you have, by the time it starts to come out of your mouth, you will say, oh, okay. Right time you say, but, but, oh, okay, I got it. I, I mean, knowledge and understanding. Can you imagine just the glory of the Lord? Praise God. Waking up, walking in it, moving in it, seeing things that you've never seen before. Praise God. I believe when the heavens open, it's just such a glorious thing. The Bible in the book of Revelation says there's things that you have never seen. There's, there's creatures and there's worshipers and there's sounds and there's glory that is unmatched by anything that you have ever experienced in a physical service amen and we look forward to that amen amen the older i get i'm i'm, I'm training myself 
to look forward to that day. Amen. Praise God. Listen, I, I'm going to get started. I don't know if uh, Pastor Tina, if you can give her a hand. She's going to come up. I'm saving her strength to the end. Praise God. She's my turbo boost. Amen. I got a little option in my car, Elder Crittenden, that it hits sports. And when I hit the sport button, it, that thing can zip. That means I can get into a small space real quick. I can match speeds real quick with that little speed. And she's my speed button. She's my sport button. Amen. Can you give her a hand clap? Praise God. Amen. So, so the, the title that the Lord has been showing and he is, he's working with me and I, I thank God for him teaching me week after week. I want to be the, 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 favorite student. Do you hear me? I want to be his favorite student. I want him to just say, I want to bring the apple to the teacher. Come on, because he's my teacher. Amen. I want to bring my gift. I want to bring everything that I have. I want to stand there as student. I want to write good notes. I want to be attentive. I don't want to talk to my neighbor. I, I just want to focus on every word that he has put in every precept, every concept, every theory, everything that is in motion, everything that's put together. I want to know it all. Amen. Praise God. So on this week, on this week, he was speaking to me about, um, <coughs> excuse me, unforced, unforced rhythm, unforced rhythms, unforced rhythms, unforced rhythms, unforced rhythms. There's even a rhythm in that, amen? But it's forced, it's forced. And, and so before I talk about the unforced, I must, I must acknowledge the forced rhythms, and we have forced rhythms within our lives, uh, rhythms that that uh, that we have manufactured, many, uh, rhythms that we have manipulated, uh, not just sounds and not just beats on the table, but I'm talking about our ways, how we move, what we say, what we do. Uh, uh, it, we are predictable in such a way that it be, has become a beat or a rhythm. It has become a, a striking onto one object to the other to produce some type of sound in the spirit. Amen. And, and so if you really think about it and you really focus on it, and I thank God for this teaching that, that, that if you think about it, everything, everything has a rhythm. Everything has a rhythm. And a lot of times we force rhythms. And when we force it, we must use our strength. But there is things in the earth that are unforced. And I'm going to get into that a little bit. But I want to talk about the force rhythm. The force rhythm is even me getting up into my day and moving into my motion and doing the things that I want to do. Somebody type it in, the things that I want to do. That's the, the force rhythm of my life. And I live in a community of force rhythm people that they set their tone. They set what they want to do. They set how they want to do. They know what they're going to say. Praise God. You can almost predict what they're going to say in certain situations. And they even know themselves. If this happens, these are the things that I will say. It is my rhythm that I like to play. It's a sound that I want to produce. It's a sound that, that, that comes out of me. It emanates out of my spirit or, or sometimes out of my anger or out of my sadness or out of my depression. I am putting forth the rhythm. I'm putting it forth. And it's a sound. And I'm saying this to the spiritual people to, to go into your, to your discernment gun so that you can start sensing rhythms around you. You can start sensing what is the beat that is happening right now in the atmosphere. How is this person moving? What is the cadence of them? How are they moving? Are they at fast pace? Are they at slow pace? The, can I, can, there is even a rhythm in your emotions. And I can pick up the rhythm in your emotions and be able to interpret it and know how to deal with every single situation, every, every, every area that I walk in, every environment, because of that rhythm. And once I understand it, now I become more prepared for my day. I'm able to move. I'm able to make decisions because, yes, Lord, I see it. Amen. I, I've been forcing things, but it's time just to hear what's already unforced. The unforced things are the natural things. Can you type that in or say it out of your mouth? The unforced rhythms are the natural rhythms or God's rhythms. Amen. They're going to happen whether I do anything or not. 
If I decide not to go into work today, those rhythms will still continue. Amen. It's like the roar of an ocean or it's the sound of the waves going back and forth. Those are not man-made forces, but it is God-released forces. It's like the birds that, that, that begin to sing at a certain time of the day. I, I, and because of who they are and they move on instinct or they move what God has put on the inside, they react to that no matter what. Just like clockwork, you can hear them and they will begin to tune up. Some at four in the morning and some begin to break forth at five five and six in the morning, but they begin to sing their songs. They begin to move in their rhythm. They begin to move on an unforced thing. This is what we do. Praise God. We're walking in the flow of what God has created for us. Praise God. You have a natural rhythm and that's in your heartbeat. That's in your breathing. And those are the things that you're not in control of. It just happens. Praise God. You can try to stop it, but, but, but immediately after so many seconds or so many minutes, you have to revert back to what God has done and your life, you have to stop holding your breath and begin to breathe again. Otherwise, you will pass out and then the breathing will pick up again. Can I get a witness in this house on today? I want to teach the spiritual people that we have the ability to see and hear more than what you thought. God is not just building a visual picture, but he is giving you sounds in the spirit. Sounds in the spirit. So let me go to my text. Matthew is 11, 25, and this is the message Bible. So it's going to read a little different. But I wanted to make sure we were clear. And, and Matthew eleven twenty five 25 starts out, says abruptly. Uh, let me stop. Before I get here, you got to know why it's abruptly. He just got done fussing with people. He just got done telling people off, saying, listen, if, if, if the people in Sodom and Gomorrah saw the miracles you saw, they would still be a city there today. He said, all they would have to do is see the things that I have done in front of you. Can I get that, get that in your spirit? See, sometimes we are destroyed because we don't appreciate or we don't know how to respond to the things that God is doing on a daily basis. We are picking our own rhythm of what we want to worship or what we want to deal with or what we want to pay attention to. But God says, I'm doing so many things on every minute, every second, every hour of the day that if you can grab hold to it, it will save you. It would keep you from destruction. And after he gets done telling them, fussing at them, he points to those that are attentive and he changes his tone and he abruptly breaks into prayer. He starts praying for them. He says, thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You, con you concealed your ways from sophisticated and know-it-alls. From sophisticated know us all, but spells them out clearly to ordinary people. Raise your hand if you're ordinary people. Praise God. If you're somebody, praise God. Maybe uh, I'm not going to say that you're in, in the wrong place, but you may feel like you're somebody. But really, the truth be told, I'm just a regular person. Amen. You cut me, I bleed. Amen. If you step on my toe, it's going to hurt. Praise God. I'm just an ordinary person. And, I, and especially for the sake of this text, because he is not speaking to the sophisticates, he's not speaking to the know-it-alls. He wants to speak to those ordinary folks. And if that's who God wants to speak to, that's who I am. Type that in. Say, that's who I am, man. Praise God. Amen. He says, yes, Father. That's the way you like to work. 27 verse. And Jesus resumed talking to the people, but now with a different tone. The Father has given me all, given me all these things to do and say. This is a unique father and son operation coming out of the father and son intimacies and knowledge. Type that in, intimacies and knowledge. Coming out of the father. It's intimacies and knowledge. Not just intimacies and not just knowledge. This is important, not just worship, but something from the worship. Not just knowledge without worship. 
You can't, you, they married, praise God. If you can't see them both, then they both got to go home. Are you hearing me? If you don't have space for me and my boo, then we both got to go. We got to, we came together, we are together. Intimacy and knowledge. It is coming out of them. No one knows the son the way the father does, nor the father the way the son does. But I am not keeping it to myself. I'm not going to make a secret about our relationship and how we connect. I am revealing it to you, the people of God, so that you can grab hold to this knowledge, so you can grab hold to this level of intimacy. I'm not going to keep you out, but I'm going to bring you in as a part of the family. Can somebody say amen? I am ready to go over the line, go over it line by line with anyone willing to listen. Type it in. That's me. I'm willing. Come on. I didn't hear nobody in this place. I'm willing. I'm willing. I'm willing. I'm willing. Not my will, but your will. I'm willing. I'm willing. Come on, y'all ain't got it in your spirit the way that I, I feel like we need. We can't move forward until you just drop yours. See, some of you just say it out of obedience, but how many really want to mean it? I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to learn. I, I, if you started a new job and they told you the amount of pay that you were going to get, and they said, but but the problem is I don't think you're going to listen. And they're going to say, no, I'm willing to listen because I see the reward. I see what you have for me. I see the benefits. I am willing. I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to learn. I thank God for Brother Ryan Henry. He says, I don't know anything about the media. He says, but I am willing. And now he's doing more than willing. He's functioning. He's functioning at a high level. And I thank God for that. 28 verse. Are you tired? Somebody say yes. <laughs> Are you worn out? Somebody say yes. Don't be scared. Are you burned out? There's a solution, so go ahead and release it right now. If that's you and you can admit it, see, the Bible says that we are supposed to confess our faults or we are supposed to be able to tell what issues we're dealing with. And the truth be told, sometimes I don't feel like it. Sometimes I don't want to smile. Sometimes I don't want to lift my hands and pray. I feel like I am worn out. Can I spend a little time here? Praise God. And, and if you think about it, it, it it's, it's two areas that put you in a place of burnout or, or where you are tired or you are exhausted or fatigued. And, and a lot of it is because you don't have any energy because you have not been eating or you have missed a meal or you missed some rest. So it's very important that we feed, get feed. We begin to feed ourselves as well as being fed. Praise God. Because sometimes I can't wait till next Sunday to get a meal. I can't wait till Wednesday to get a meal. I eat every day, hours upon the day. When I'm lacking energy. Matter of fact, you know, the, the, the people in the medical field and the scientists and even us novices, we know that our metabolism doesn't even kick in until we begin to begin to eat some things, praise God. And up until that point, you have been fasting. They said until you begin to break that fast, whether it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon or 6 o'clock in the evening, if you have not eaten anything all day, you have been on a fast and you have told this body to stop and, and, and to be calm and to obey and wait, praise God. But in, in, for the sake of this message that I'm teaching today that we need to feed ourselves if we want some energy. Jesus said man shall not live by bread alone but by every by every what? That what? Out of where? Where does it originate? From God. Come on, somebody should have had an attitude with that. Somebody should have stood to their feet, but it originates from God. I'm not talking about the word that comes to Elder Crittenden, even though he has some good ones. I'm not talking about the word that comes from Sister Bridget because she's very wise, but I'm talking about the word that originated from God. I want daddy's cooking, praise God. I don't want to deal with other people's cooking right now. I need to deal with daddy's meat, and I want his meat to be fed to me right now so that I can have strength. 
Once I have that strength, I can run. Once I have that, I can move. Praise God. So, so not having that energy messes you up. Not having that oxygen will mess you up. Not being able to breathe air or being in that still can, can tire you out. Praise God. I, I, we, we took the baby for her birthday to, the, uh, to, to Disney World. Praise God. And, and we back all right and say praise the Lord. But, but it was so hot there that it was difficult for us to get the breath that we needed. So there our energy began to sap to where all me and Pastor Tina wanted to do is sit down. We even volunteered. We'll watch the baby. Y'all go do what you got to do. Why? Because my energy has been depleted because I cannot get the spirit or that breath that I need. Praise God. If we as the people of God become to understand that that is vital to us as it is oxygen, it's more vital for us to have the spirit of God coming in and out, moving through us and for us and moving on our behalf and we can get to that part. Praise God. So let me ask you again, are you tired? Are you worn out? And are you burned out on religion? I didn't say church. I didn't say church. I didn't say that. I said religion. Some of you got it twisted, but some of y'all, religion is, we got to do this thing a certain way and that certain way. But, but, but are we able to move on God's rhythm? Praise the Lord. Are we able to move at his pace? Are we able to move at his speed? Are we able to go in his will? I'm not talking about we got to have a table out front or we got to do this or that or we got to do hopscotch as we come through the door. I'm not talking about religion, religious things, but I'm talking about spiritual things. Now, if there's in the spirit, he tells me to do something something that is labeled religious because the spirit told me I'm going to do it. But I'm also going to wait if he says that I want you not to do that today and do something different. The Bible says that, that Joshua and the people of God marched around the wall seven times. And on the seventh day, they did something different than they did the sixth day prior. It wasn't until there was a shift. It wasn't until they understood the cadence or the rhythm that things began to change. But they had to be focused on the Lord. He says, get away with me. And you'll recover your life. Somebody type that in, recover your life. As the young people say, get your life. Recover your life. Recover your life. Recovery. How do we cover the life? It's in the text. I, I like the King James Version. That's what I grew up on. I'm not religious. I just like the flow of it. Praise God. I like the, I like the um, poetry of it all. Praise the Lord. And it says, come unto me. All you that are worn out, burned out, tired of religious uh, programs, praise God. Come on to me, saith the Lord. Praise God. Come on to me. I want you to get this for a minute. See, see, some of you want God to come, you God to come to you. But in this particular uh, situation, if you want to come out of this tiredness or a little stagnant nature to where you're not ready to work, you're not ready to move, you're not ready to worship, you can't ask God to come to you. He says, under this particular situation, you must come to me. He says, I'm not going to stand in your atmosphere. I'm not going to stand in your environment. I need you to get into my environment. Don't teach me from your house. This lesson got to be taught from a house of success. This got to come from a moment of success. Somebody that knows what they're talking about. And I can't be caught up in all your clutter. Drop it right there. Leave them right there. I want you to say it says so much when he says, come unto me. He says, leave all the drama behind. Leave all the mess behind. Leave all the anxiety behind. Leave all the depression behind. Leave all the sadness behind. I know it's hurt, but you don't want to stay there, so come. Come out. Come out so you can get your life back. So you can get your life back. Not the life when you was your most happy happiest, but I'm talking about abundant life. 
I'm talking about a happiness that you have not seen before, that you have not experienced before. This is what Jesus is offering them. I'm not talking about the happiness when your first child was born or the day that you was married or the day that they gave you a new car or, or the day you moved into a new house or, or the day you got a good grade at school. I'm not talking about any of those moments. I'm not talking when, when, when your restaurant served your perfect food and it was perfection and it tastes good going down. I'm not talking about any of those happinesses. I'm talking about something that is unspeakable. We don't have words written to describe the happiness and the joy that God is getting ready to set before you. But you got to come. You got to come. Come unto me, saith the Lord. I will show you how to take a real rest. How to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. I want you to catch this because a lot of times we think rest is sleeping. That's what I do. Amen. I was sad because when they showed me a picture of a baby, every time Elder Critton and I was sleeping. Something like the baby just makes me go to sleep. <laughs> but Jesus is not talking about sleeping. He's talking about resting or abiding with him or moving as he moves, speaking how he speaks, talking and touching how he would talk or touch. In other words, his ways, not your ways. Praise God. See, see, we talk about burnout, but burnout happens mostly in the flesh and not so much of it. Uh, I, I meant to say something about not just uh, our hunger, but our dehydration. Sometimes we can de be dehydrated because we have not got the fluids in that we need. And, and, and it does not show on the outside as much as what is doing damage on the inside. See, and the, and the water represents the spirit of God. And sometimes when you don't have enough spirit or you have not got yourself into spiritual places or you are not surrounded around spiritual people then then things will begin to dehydrate you on the inside and your internal organs will begin to break down and stop functioning the way that God has called in other words we won't be able to figure out what's wrong with you but we know something's wrong we can't see it on the outside but there's things breaking down on the inside and you got to be careful that you are in the right place at the right time and most importantly with him so that all those things can stay healthy. <sighs> I like this next part. There's a dot, dot, or a hyphen, hyphen. And he says, watch how I do it. <sighs> not Pastor Lee. Not Pastor Tina. Not Minister Brian. Not Pastor Lakia, not Pastor Kelly, not, not Elder Critton, not, not, not Sister Jackie, uh, not any of you online. He says, watch how I do it. In other words, I have a tailor-made program of how you're going to walk and work and have your rest at the same time. I'm going to keep you in peace. When people will come and get on your nerves, it ain't going to bother you a bit. Why? Because I'm going to show you how I do it. Praise God. You wonder how could he have Judas with her for three years knowing that he will betray her. But he says, listen, don't worry about the Judases. Watch how I do it. Praise God. How do you think that he can move her and grow up as a little kid knowing that he's going to have to hang at the cross how does he do it show me oh God watch me watch me walk watch me take you to places that you would not go one of my favorite scriptures at the end of the book of John he says when you become older you he says while you're young you're going to move and do what you want to do but when you get older you're going to lift your hands and another is going to gird you and take you places that you would not go praise God I want to get to the place now now in your flesh the place where the Lord wants to take you is going to be distressful it's going to be agonizing it's going to be hurtful it's going to be exhausting but in the spirit, you will begin to move and hold your head up and begin to say what thus saith the Lord because you know that you don't come in your own strength, but in the power of the mighty God. 
I want you to catch this text. He says, watch how I do it. He doesn't say what. Meaning, I want you to watch how I do everything. Watch how I talk with people. Watch how I go to bed. Watch how I eat. Watch how I walk. Watch when I stop. Watch when I move. Watch when I begin to pray. Watch when I stop and refrain from praying. Learn from me. He wants to get us in a position of rest. Once you're in God's way and not your own way, it is easy. The, 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 the King James says, for my burdens are light. They're not heavy as your child that you go through. They're not heavy as your children you got to deal with. They're not heavy as your people and your, your friends and even your enemies. They're not heavy like that. Trust me. He says, and my burden or my workload is not heavy. It's light. Meaning you can toss that thing on your back and keep moving. Praise God. You don't even have to switch arms with it. Sometimes one thing gets heavy on this arm. I got to, I got to change to this arm. Amen. He says, it's light enough where you can just hold it. Almost forget that it's there. But it's guiding. So watch how I do it. Watch how I do everything. God wants to get us into a place to where every movement, everything that we do, we, we learn and we learn from him. Last part. And then I'll see where I'm at. Learn the unforced rhythms. I just talked about rhythms in general. But he says there is a specific rhythm that I want you to grab hold of. It is an unforced rhythm of grace. What does that mean? That God has favor in store for me every day of my life. But I got to know where it, it is, where it is so that I can be in the right place. And the easy way for me to do that is I got to be in him and him in me. As you know the father, you know the son. But even as that, you know the grandson, Ivan, right here. Praise God. So I need to move and act the way he acts so that I can find the grace for my life. What is the grace for my life? It's the thing that I don't even deserve. It's the thing that it's just a favor. It's just something that God has set in my path. It's something that he has put in my life. It's set there to take me there and, and forward. And it's not always sweet and tastes good. Sometimes my grace is to walk through trouble. Sometimes my grace is to get through a hard time. My grace is to be able to speak while I'm feeling choked up. That's my grace. He has this set. Sometimes we think grace is only blessings. But sometimes it's a blessing to go through some trouble. Some people that live for a little while know what I'm talking about. Somebody that been through some things say, and you understand the scripture when he said it was good for us that we was beaten. Praise God. It was good for us that we went through some stuff. It, it told me a little bit about myself. It taught me that I could handle some things that I didn't think I could handle. It told me that I'm stronger than what I thought I was. Praise God. It told me that I could trust on my God and he will take me even through this hell that I got to deal with right now. He's teaching me through grace. Are you sure, Pastor Lee? Well, wasn't it Paul that says when he said he prayed that this storm was going to come out of my side so I don't have to deal with this anymore? And, and God does not respond with healing. He does not show up with a, a word, a prophetic word. He does not show up with this or that. He says, my grace. I'm going to teach you how to walk while you're still hurting. I'm going to teach you how to move while you're still hurting. I'm going to teach you how to do my job while you're still suffering. I'm going to teach you how to embrace some people when you feel like dying. Come on, that's the kind of grace we need to preach about. Anybody can do good when good things are happening, but what happens when trouble and all hell is breaking loose? Can you walk in grace then? Hallelujah. 
He says, learn the unforced rhythm. Learn where it is. It's a natural thing occurring, but you got to know where to find it. You got to be able to hear it. Praise God. And God is speaking his grace. Praise God. He is speaking it to you according to this word. It is there for you. All you got to do is listen for it. David says, shall I go after them? We don't think about it. But to say that means we're going to fight. It's going to be a battle. Will I recover it? Everything. They're not going to just let it go. <laughs> I'm talking about grace right now. God is going to tell you, listen, yes, now is the time to go and recover what has been taken from you. Or he's going to say, let it go. I got something better for you. Praise God. But but you got to be able to hear what he is saying under this situation. I've learned that in all situations, I know that God has something in my favor in this situation. No matter whether it's good or bad, no matter whether it's horrible or it seems like the hell is trying to come up and swallow me, I know that God has a grace or he has a way of escape for me or he is going to have me recover seven times what the enemy or the caterpillar has, the, the canker worm or the caterpillar has stolen. I know if I can find his grace, I can walk in that place, I can walk in that space, I can go pick up my stuff, I can fight who I got to fight. Come on somebody. I can fight in the spirit. If you want to bring Lucifer himself, I'll fight him right now in the name of Jesus. As long as you are with me, I will go. Some of you got to go deal with some things you don't want to deal with. And the question is, Lord, do you want me to go? Do I need to talk to them? Do I need to confront them? Do I need to deal with this issue? Or do I leave it alone? I'm seeking for the unforced rhythm, the unforced rhythm. My rhythm is to take care of it the way I want to take care of it, but I know you have a perfect rhythm and it's unforced. It's already natural. I don't have to do anything to it. I don't have to add anything there. I don't have to say play the cymbals while you hit that beat. I don't have to say throw the keyboard in there with that sound. I, I can just stick with the rhythm that you have because it's good enough if I could just discern it, if I could just hear it, if you could just do it. If anything, I should say, Lord, just let me hear what you are saying in this season for my life so that I can step in it, oh God, so I can move to where you're at. Another thing about this rhythm, according to this text, he said, I am where the rhythm is, praise God. If you can find yourself in worship and knowledge at the same time, you can find that place of grace. You can find that place where that, 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 that unforced rhythm exists and you can begin to live your life. Come on, Pastor Tina, I'm winding down. I'm not tired. It's just time. I won't lay anything ill-fitting on you. He will not give you more than you can bear. And I know we can dispute that sometimes. And I know we want to challenge that sometimes because, Lord, it seems like this is more than I can bear. But it is not to the level of complete comfort, but just to be able to get through it. Amen. If, if I can stop a bullet like Superman, the best ideal is that I don't have to deal with bullets at all. But the fact that he showed me that the bullet will stop at me and not impact me or no weapon formed against me is going to be able to prosper that is the purpose of the test praise God that, 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 that the weapons are going to be formed but they're not going to make money off of it. Do you hear me? They're not going to be able to go to the bank with it. Praise God. They're not going to get their expected result the way they thought they would Praise God. Keep company with me and you'll learn. <laughs> Praise God, Minister Regina. 
They were in here praying on today. I tell you what, they was tearing down. I'm surprised that we got any walls left in this building, praise God. I'm surprised that the chairs were still sitting up because they was turning some things up in the spirit on this morning, which make it easier for me to preach on today. But they was going in, praise the Lord. And the Lord says, he said, just stick with me. Just keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. <laughs> Amen. I was a little kid in the, in the, in the 70s and I'll never forget Muhammad Ali. He fought like a butterfly. <laughs> He was in the heavyweight division. You don't understand what he was trying to say. I'm in the heavyweight division. We're supposed to pound. He says, but I'm going to float. Praise God. Come on, somebody. I'm going to float like a butterfly, but I'm going to sting like a bee. Come on. Somebody got to learn that. Listen, I was heavy for the rest of y'all. I ain't heavy for me. Why? Because I got my Jesus with me. Come on. I need about 20 people to stand to their feet and begin to give God some praise for what he's doing in this place because he's says if you come with me you're going to learn how to live freely and lightly glory to God glory to God come on God of praise that was the way right there live freely pastor was speaking and I thought about that rest I believe the enemy is using um, techniques to try to wear the saints out I believe he's trying to get us tired. He's, he's trying to get us worn out. And, and it's so important that we rest. And I was kind of looking up the meaning of rest. And it meant to relax into something that supports you. I thought about that because we have the couch and, you know, we have the bed that we go to for rest. But, but many of us, I don't know about you, if, if the mattress is not right, sometimes I'm still up. And, and sometimes the mattress can be right and, and the covers can be good. But it seems like my mind keeps going. And, and it seems like I can't rest the way I want to rest. But the Bible said, come Woo, hallelujah. When I, I thought about that word come, Pastor, I said that means uh, you have to do something. And a lot of times we are coming to God, uh, but we're leaving too quickly. We're not staying at the altar where that God can release his peace. Uh, so we give it to God for a second, uh, and then we take it back. And I'm just going to be short on today, but I heard the Holy Ghost say uh, that we need to let Go! Let go of what's ailing you. Let go of what's depressing you. Let go. You gotta let go in order to get the rest. Because if you don't let go, you'll crawl right in bed with it. You'll crawl right on the couch with it. You've got to let go and say, God, I trust you. Easily said than done. I know, I know, I've been there. I let it go. And then the enemy throws it back and I catch it. Sometimes I have to tell the devil, I say, you know what? You got me last night on that and you got me yesterday on that. But today, who am I speaking to? Because, see, the devil will mess up your mind. And he'll keep on throwing punches. I don't know why we think that we don't have to fight when the devil is on his job 24-7. He won't let you sleep. He won't let you eat. And we think one little prayer is going to block the devils and the demons that's coming for us all day. Oh, come on. We got to get prepared. We got to go in warfare. We got to pray in the morning. Pray in the noon day. Pray in the evening. Pray in the two in the morning, three in the morning. Where y'all at? Where are the prayer warriors? Any prayer warriors online today? All that can testify. It takes more than one prayer. You want rest, but you don't want to go through warfare. Hallelujah. God has said, I want to give my people rest. <sighs> If the enemy can steal our rest, he has us worn out. If he has us worn out and tired, we don't want to pray. 
we don't want to worship and we sure don't want to praise oh come out here and get you tired I, I don't feel like clapping I, I don't even feel like getting up I don't know if there's anybody else that can be real but sometimes I don't even feel like getting up it hurts just to get dressed it hurts just to function and I have to fight I have to say devil you are lying the devil tried to keep me home today. I, I was sick all night I, and I was praying. I told Pastor Lee, I don't think I can make it. He said, okay, babe. And when he said, okay, babe, something shifted in me. And before I knew it, my feet was on the floor and I was getting dressed and I was getting ready. Oh, yes. I said, devil, you a liar. If I got to crawl into the presence of the Lord and when I have the prayer going forth, sometimes you just need a good prayer service when I heard them speaking in the heavenly language when I heard something familiar I could tell that something was breaking off of my body something was breaking off of my mind sometimes you need to get in the presence of God I didn't want to go the flesh didn't want to go. Tell your flesh to shut up. It's been talking too long. It's been controlling you too long. Oh, tell it to be quiet now. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. And you got to bow. Everything that's coming against me has to bow in the name of Jesus. Woo! It's got a resting place for us. When we're weary, we become doubtful. And it fights our faith. Faith can't win when we're doubting. But God said he wants to bring us into a place of rest. Come on, just put your hands together and give God a praise. Come on, you can do better than that. Those of you online, go on and give an emoji. Let me know you on here. Hallelujah. Come on, just say, I'm getting ready to walk and rest. Come on, declare it on today. I'm getting ready to walk and rest. Hallelujah. I don't care who's coming against me. Come on, even your kids are get on your nerves. Come on, the devil is alive. When I get home today, I Come on, somebody. Come See, the out. devil's going to be waiting in the corner for you. I'm just going to prophesy right now because I've learned his tactics. He is ready to kill, steal, and destroy. You can come in church, have a hallelujah, good time, and when you get home, the devil is ready. But you ought to do a thing on the enemy and let him know when I get home, when I open the door, the rest of God is coming in. The glory of God is coming in. The anointing one is coming in and everything every blockage every demon that's coming against my finances coming against my body has got to bow has got to go in the name of jesus praise god amen i thought she said she had a little but if that's a little man praise god listen he came and he recognized where they were at and he put out an invitation. He says, come unto me. He's not talking about those coming for salvation, but just those who have been weary. I want you to make your way out into the open space and I want you to lift your hands right now. Those are at home. I want you to lift your hands. He says, come unto me who all that are heavy laden. Praise God. He says, I'm getting ready to give you some rest right now. I'm getting ready to give you some peace right now. If you need that, praise God. And I know we walk in, every one of us have a situation where we need some peace or we need some rest or we just need a break, praise God. He says, I'm going to give it to you, but it's not going to look like the rhythms of this world. It's going to look like the rhythm that I have established, that I've placed even on the earth for you. Praise God. Just stand there and begin to open up your mouth. Say, I'm here, oh God. Amen. That seems like just one of the only few requirements is just get there and then listen. Amen. So Lord, I'm here and I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. 
I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. Speak. Speak to me. Teach me. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. The Bible says he changed his tone. He stopped fussing. He stopped telling the people, listen, what they're not doing. And he shifted to this group. And I believe we're a part of that group. He says, I'm getting ready to give you something. And it's going to help you every day. Hallelujah. I know what I'm talking about, saith the Lord. I've been through it myself. I'm going to lead you and guide you into those same spaces, into those same places. The Bible says that, he says, I'm going to leave you another comforter. And, and that comforter will lead you and guide you to all truth. Praise God. And we're walking that right now. Amen. Another part was intimacy. The, the scripture and message Bible said intimacy and knowledge. I want you to get them right now. I want you just to grab them right now. We're not leaving this place. We're not leaving this room. We, I don't want you to leave your spot until you start getting that understanding. The Bible says in all that getting, get an understanding. Say, Lord, I want, you to, I want you to teach me about this rhythm. I want you to teach me about what's happening around me. I want to teach me your ways, oh God. I want to walk in that, praise the Lord. And at the same time, I want to enjoy your company. I want to enjoy your, your, your presence, your touch, praise God. Come on, begin to worship right here. We don't have to be cued by music, praise God. We need to build ourselves to where we can just tap in right now in the moment. Just like he said, come. He, well, they didn't say that when I get ready or, or let me get myself worked up or wait for the band to happen. He just said, start moving. And as they started moving, they could walk into that peace that he was talking about, into that rest that he was describing. Come on, let me hear some voices in this place. I need somebody to grab a mic and help pray with me. Praise the Lord. Yeah, Now, come on, give me some mics. Get it to our intercessors right now. Praise the Lord. They started this day and they're going to finish it. Praise the Lord. Yeah, but they're right behind you, right behind you. Praise God, right here. Praise God. They got it. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, we need to hand them a mic if you would. They're used up over here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, but Ah, but I don't call. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Somebody's picking up something that's too heavy for them that needs to be released on today. And we want to release it right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. I know we got a lot. Come on, bring whatever you got. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Those of you online, this is your time to put your petition, your prayer request on the screen right now. Come on. Come on. That's it. That's it. Yeah, 
I need every yoke, every yoke wearer, every yoke wearer, every yoke wearer. You are, you are a slave of God. Praise God. You, you are His servant. I need you to begin to wear right now in the name of Jesus. I believe, I believe that every time we have a God experience, there is a word released. There is a word released. And that those with that prophetic unction right now, this is your job. You come and I need that word right now. We need that word released right now. Praise God. Don't hesitate. Walk by faith. You know that he has it. By faith is being released unto you. Praise God. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can come up here. Praise God. We almost done. But we're not leaving without the without the wisdom, without the knowledge. Go ahead. Today the Lord says, I am elevating you. From a place of servanthood to a place of sonship, you will come from a place of asking to a place of decree and declaring. 
when you rise to sit next to me as I have paid the price for, says the Lord, you shall be able to decree a thing and to be established. The Lord will begin to back you as you begin to know him and get to closer to him and know his heart. Whatever you shall say, it shall be so. It's time to stop asking the devil, please stop messing with me and tell him in the name of Jesus, you have to back up. There is no authority above the name of Jesus. It's time for us to use it as who we are. In the name of Jesus, I pull you out of that identity crisis. In the name of Jesus, you shall be elevated to your place of authority, seated in heavenly places. No more asking permission. Take what's yours in Jesus' name. What I hear the spirit of God saying is that there is a shifting that is taking place in many of your lives. And many of you have been stagnant. And even in this time of the pandemic, it's almost been like you've been laying dormant, but it's time for you to arise and to shift. There's a new thing that God is going to do in your life, that God is going to do in the lives of your family. Many of you have been praying for your sons and your daughters to come into the faith. God said, now is the time. God said, begin to decree, begin to call out their names. I hear the name Jonathan. I hear the name Richard begin to come forth in the name of Jesus. Every son and every daughter who has been raised in this church, meaning not New Harvest, but the church at large, it is time for you to come back into the house and do what thus says the Lord. For the word says that the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. There is a ripe harvest that is coming in this season. And I hear the Spirit of God saying, get ready, people of God. Wait Wake up, people of God. Arise, people of God. Get ready for the harvest. Get ready for the harvest. You've been sowing. You've been sowing. You've been sowing, but it's time to reap. Says thus says the Lord. And not only shall you reap of your sons and daughters and the generations coming back, but there's riches that is being poured out into the house of God. There's a kingdom work that needs to be done. There's a kingdom work that needs to be done. And if you're ready to do the kingdom work, all you have to do is receive the riches for it is coming into your hands to give. Uh, but no longer shall people look at us and say, why should I be saved? Because you have nothing. Now they're going to look and say, why well, you have it all? What must I do to have what you have? And it's not just going to be because of the riches, but it's going to be good of the peace that is on the inside of you. It's going to be the peace that you have in your mind. It's going to be the glory that you have. How you walk and how you strut, says the Spirit of God. So get ready to receive what He has and get ready to do the work. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. In prayer this morning, and even during this morning prayer and the service prayer. The Lord, he kept saying access. And as he was saying access, he showed me a door. And there was enough room for everyone to go through that door that he's granted access. But there's some people that was hesitant, that didn't want to go in the door. They was resistant to the door. They felt like they was not worthy to go through the door. They felt like they had to be positioned a certain way to go through the door. But God released an invitation. And there were some people that missed the invitation. But God was already saying, I've given you the door. I've granted you access to come and it lined up with the message on today that just come all you that are heavy and burdened and and draw down to just come I've already given you access and to come to the door so that he can release every heavy burden of the mind there is a place of confusion over the mind and minister Brian he talked about that identity crisis not being sure of who you are but when God released the invitation he was saying that place where you you didn't know who you are when you come through that door that's where you will begin to know who you are in him some of you been comparing yourselves comparing yourselves 
But God says, I've already accepted you. You've already come to a place of adoption to receive that. I have accepted you already into the beloved. You are accepted in the beloved. The focus have been off of God and the focus has been on the circumstances and the things. But what if God don't take that away from you? What if God, he will, he will test our hearts to see what is the posture and the position of our hearts. And again, God said, come and some of you didn't go through that door and he is releasing an invitation. Anytime somebody actually gives you an invitation, it's free. It's freely given. It's nothing you have to do. So we've already opened the door. Come in and receive it. So I pray that that place of resistance where a lot of you have resisted and put up a wall it's because you don't feel love. You haven't felt the love of the Father. But I, but I pray that the love of the Father will penetrate every hard place, every place where you felt like you had to measure up. You don't have to measure up in his presence. Just come. He invited just come at the wedding feast. He invited the poor. He invited the lame. He invited those that didn't have it all together. He said, come, I've already laid it out for you. Amen. And in right in line, I believe this is in line with, uh, with pastor, uh, Lakia just said, um, I had a dream a couple of weeks ago. I wrote it down, but I didn't bring it with me, but I'm going to try to remember it. So I, I had a dream, and I'm not a dreamer, but um, I had a dream um, a, couple of weeks, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I, I was at work, but I walked into work, and I saw that everybody had their mask off. And I was asking them, like, what are you all doing? Why do you have your mask off? And so I, I, after that, I woke up and I said, wow, Lord, what did that mean? I don't know. What, what does that mean? I mean, usually I don't dream anything, but it kept bothering me. And I asked the Lord. And he said that what I heard him say was that a lot of us have to pull these masks off. We're hiding behind uh, depression. Uh, we're allowing anxiety. Pull off the mask of anxiety and depression and these the things that the devil is telling you in your minds. Um, like she said, that you're not welcome and you're not worthy. And a lot of the, the things we're listening to the enemy say, uh, we, we need to stop doing. And I, so he said to me, we need to take the mask off. He was also talking to me. Take that mask off that you're hiding behind. The mask of anxiety uh, that's stopping you. you. You use it as an excuse that, you, that while you can't come into the house of the Lord or you can't work for the house of the Lord, and it's time to pull that mask off, those masks off that you're hiding behind that's stopping you from coming into the house of the Lord, receiving the word of God, doing the work of the Lord, because he has a work for each and every one of us, each and every one of us. And so all we have to do is come from behind these masks, not literally, but the masks that we sometimes hide behind to keep from fulfilling the work that God has given us. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord took me to a place of warfare. This is real. Pastor just said, no weapon formed against us shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. And as I started to begin thinking about warfare, the Lord downpoured in my spirit. I wasn't even going to say anything, but the Holy Spirit took over. And I started thinking about occupation. When our countries go to war against each other, one occupies the other. And the enemy has tried to take occupation when he called our downtime. He tried to occupy our thoughts. He even occupied our habits. We got lazy and slowful habits 
now that we had to get delivered from right now. We have he's occupied our language where we don't walk and speak in victory, but we spoke in calm and we start saying things that's okay for me to lay down and uh, serve you, Lord. We say it's okay to step back and not do things the way he occupied. Everything that we're doing and trying to take it away. But the Lord said there is a breaking of the occupation right now. The war has turned around. Some battles have been lost, but the battles is not what wins the war. The victory is done. He says, start walking in your victory again. Right now, start walking in your authority again. Stop saying, I don't feel like, or this doesn't have to be. Stop using defeated language. He says, start using victorious language. You have already won. We're fighting a war we cannot lose that's already won. He says, remember who I am. I am your banner. I am your shield. I am your fortress. I am your refuge. Walk in me, says the Lord. Thank you. We're just going to pray and speak a word over the pastors. So um, I'm going to start, and um, you're going to finish, but I wanted to tell you I, I called you but I didn't get to tell you what I saw I was in here praying one day and as I was praying I was just praying for peace and praying for the spirit of God to dwell in this place and what I began to see was like this white almost like flag or this white banner and then on the white banner I began to see almost like a rainbow and different colors that were splattered on the flag like just thrown on the flag and I was like what does this mean and the flag was moving it was very fluid, like it, was, it wasn't stagnant. And so I was thinking, I talked to Minister Brian, I was like, I saw this, and I'm trying to figure out what it means, what is God saying? And then as he began to talk to me, God began to release. So the whiteness is almost like a newness. We're in a new season, we're in a new time. Things have shifted in a different place. So that white thing is like us starting over, starting again, kind of starting from scratch with newness, right? But then those colors represented different people. Different looking people. We all don't look the same. We're different. So it's the diversity of people that are going to come into the ministry. And the thing that I love the most is that the flag was moving. And what that meant, it wasn't stagnated. It wasn't standing still. It wasn't stuck in an old way. It was moving with the wind. And that wind is the spirit of God. So as the spirit of God begins to move and tell you what to do and how to act, I hear the Lord saying, if God be for you, who could be against you? If God is for you. Who can be against you? So know that what God is showing you, know what God is saying to you, know that the new things that God is telling you to do, continue to move forward because you're going with the spirit. You're going with the wind. I want to pray, but as... Pastor Sharice was going, God was showing me a whiteboard and he said, clean slate. The slate is clean. He's doing it all over. He's doing it new and to continue to follow his spirit that wherever the spirit of the Lord tells you to go, to go. And sometimes it may feel uncomfortable because when you're used to being able to do things a certain way and line it up and do a certain way, and it can be, it can be uncomfortable sometimes, but God is saying, you can be vulnerable with me. You can be vulnerable with me and I'm going to do it. Set your face like a flint, says the spirit of God and whatever God says, that's what you stand on. You stand on his word. Don't fear their faces. Don't worry about don't worry about what they say because the spirit of God is standing with you. He is holding y'all up and there's new lands you that you are going to possess. I hear the word accusation accus accusation and God is you're going to possess new lands and new territories and there's nothing too hard for God. That There's going to be a community. You're going to build a community so there's buildings and businesses kingdom assignment that is beyond these church walls that's going to be a community this is a fruitful place there's going to be people that's going to bring so much into this church if they're going to bring so much they're just going to give it to you that even in the bible the apostles the people they came and they brought stuff to the apostles feet and they're going to bring it to your feet and you're going to use that and you're going to build a community many are called but few are chosen and that there are some 
one that God he chooses. He chooses for a specific work and a specific assignment. And God has called you to possessors. Your possessors and your builders. And you're going to build in this city. You're going to build in regions. You're going to build globally. You are going to build and walk in it. Don't be reserved. You won't be reserved in it. But you will be bold and courageous and confident in what God, because God is going to be that force and that wind that is going to back y'all up. And he's going to take a veil and he's going to propel you and you're going to be in one place. And next thing you know, you're going to be in a different place. In a in the name of Jesus. And I thank the Lord. I want to pray for Pastor Tina right now in the Jesus that every place of harassment where the enemy have arrested her in her body we pray for divine healing now in Jesus name that there will be no more occurrences no more no more reoccurrences in her body in the that she will no longer be attacked in the name of Jesus we speak to her bones and her ligaments now in Jesus name that there will be a there will be flexibility in the mighty name of Jesus and where there have been deficiencies we pray now God that you will release deficiencies we thank you that God is going to give you wisdom in what areas there have been that there have been some deficiencies even in your health so we thank you now God that where there's a deficiency oh God you will release a consistency in the name of Jesus God I thank you that you will release that wisdom in the name of Jesus God and we thank you that no weapon for it shall not be able to prosper against her in the name of Jesus God that you will strengthen her hands to do the work that is before her in the mighty name of Jesus Lord and we just thank you God for you preparing her for a new day God and even more is uh, down the road even more speaking engagements God we thank you for God for the voice God that you have for her to to go across state lines in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for you getting them ready in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. The Lord's sake is used to this. Ah, he said, I'm bringing them. And I'm bringing them from far wide to sit at your feet. And included in the numbers, your enemies of the past. Ooh, the word was about let go. Are you willing to let go? to serve those who meant to kill you earlier in life. Because of your heart, because of your willingness, God has elevated y'all to a place where they will come to eat. And you don't have to worry about doing it in your own strength. He's going to guide you. He's going to staff you supernaturally. Rana naman suri, and I hear this for y'all too. Whatever you say, you shall have. If there's ever a need, speak it. Pastor Lee, you already walk in this. But it's going to be heightened. They're coming. They're coming. And you're built forward in Jesus' name. I just want to pray over Pastor Lee and myself, too, in the name of Jesus. We just thank the Lord for you pastor in the mighty name of jesus god told me to speak to your body in the mighty name of jesus everything that will try to cause you any ailments anything that will cause you any stiffness anything to cause you any discomfort anything to cause you any immobility the lord is rebuking it right now in the mighty name of jesus he's saying he's putting your body even without the chiropractor but he is the holy ghost chiropractor putting your body in alignment right now in the mighty name of jesus so that you can function to do the work that i have for you to do that it will not be a setback every 
demonic assignment on your body. The Lord rebukes it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. He's going to give you a double portion of health right now in the mighty name of Jesus. It's going to be a little bit more bounce. It's going to be a little bit more run in the mighty name of Jesus. We spray health and strength over you in every area of your body from the soles of your feet to the top of your head right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Full mobility right now. No discomfort right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We even speaking against every word curse that has arose up against either one of y'all right now, against the ministry right now. The Lord rebukes it right now. The God shared with his put in my spirit. He says for every curse that someone speaks, I'm going to bless you double right now in the mighty name of Jesus. For every word curse is a double blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that's every naysayer. He said, I am the way maker for every naysayer. I am the way maker. He wants you to know that right now in the mighty name of Jesus. He says, continue to walk to walk in the mighty name of Jesus. Continue to talk to talk in the mighty name of Jesus. I stretch you and we bless you in Jesus' name. God. Amen. I tell you what, I feel like I, I just live in my own message. <laughs> Praise God. I want to thank all of you that join us online. Uh, those for your giving at this time. Um, Brother Leviston is coming for those in, in person. If you want to give, you can just uh, walk where he is. We, I don't think any more prayer is needed. The house, the ground is fertile, praise God. And we believe that every seed sown on today will be landing on fertile ground. I just want to thank God. Thank you, Brother Keith. And who else did I see? Jan Janet. And uh, thank you all for praying with us online. Thank you all for being with us praise god and i really do i i, I want to just thank god for the confirming word he's been speaking to me uh, and pastor tina that he's going to do a great thing and so i kind of been kind of feeling good no matter what it looks like no matter what it looks like i've been feeling really good because i know that god is getting ready to transform and, and i watched him and he's even transforming our leaders and we're being transformed and i just see the transformation just hitting new heights and so i'm excited about that praise god and we've been on here for a little while now so i'm gonna let all of our let all of our uh, viewers that are viewing with us, wherever you at, our prayers are with you. And once again, we want to thank you for uh, supporting us financially. Uh, we thank you for every seed that's sown. Um, we also want to remember the Gibson family on this week. Praise God. And um, with that said, I'm going to end our, our live broadcast. So I just want to thank you all for coming. Unless you got something else to say. So say God bless you. So God bless you. Yeah, so we're going to end. <laughs> you said, Pastor Sapan said we can keep going. Amen. So I'm going to let y'all go off. You know, you know, just you can sign off. We're gonna, I'm going to sign off in a little bit. You can put your last comments in. We'll let them uh, go. But for everybody in the house, if you would stand. Praise God. If there's anybody here that needs prayer, um, you can just raise your hand. There's one back there, one over there. If we can have some of our pastors or our elders or which you can go and stand in a safe distance from them. We're going to pray with them. Praise God. Anybody else? Praise God. And we're praying. We're praying right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you let this word come alive on today, Lord. You said or you promised us that you would be with us. You, you gave us access. You have opened doors, oh God. And we thank you for that 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 uh, invitation, oh God, on today, Lord. And we boldly walk even into those spaces created by you for us. Father, we thank you for healing right now. We're praying for our Brother Keith's uh, dad's heart surgery on tomorrow, oh God, Lord, that you will touch the doctor, oh God, that you will give them wisdom and understanding and we also speak for a speedy recovery oh god in the name of jesus we speak and, and we stand on that we know that by his stripes we are healed and we thank you for it in jesus name praise god 
Amen. And Father, we pray also for those that are traveling, Lord, whether it's just to home or if it's out of state or wherever your destination is, we pray for safe traveling mercies, oh God, that God protect you and watch over you and give you that access safely there and returning again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank mm -hmm. you.